and welcome to this video and what I want to show you today is how to create a custom space in Gather based on an aerial photograph. This is quite a fun way to create a space which is really unusual and striking looking and it's also very quick and easy compared to other methods of creating spaces. It also creates a space which is dependent mostly on a single JPEG image and that makes it fairly lightweight and less demanding in resources than building up a space using Gather's own objects. Um, so in order to do this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a site called Unsplash. Now Unsplash is a royalty free image site, site um, and that makes it ideal for this kind of thing. So any of these images that you get from Unsplash, you're, as long as you credit them, you're free to use them for anything and that makes them perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for Arial in order to pick up all the Arial shots and then I'm going to search for Resort because I want like a holiday resort image. I want a kind of a fun, relaxed um, atmosphere for this. Okay, and when you search, um, the first two rows of results, those are pay for images on iStock. Um, and then below that, where it says results for whatever your search was, that's your royalty free images under there. And you can see there's quite a range of different images. Here's a, a water park, here's a little holiday resort with huts. Here's a railway line. That's a little bit bleak. Um, there's a, a railway line, a field, and some trees. I think we'll not we'll not go for that one. Um, there's quite a lot of images of like the natural world, so you can have people on this rocky shoreline, on this little island. That's rather nice for a small group. Um, there's lots and lots of options. Um, and here's another water park. And the one I'm going to go for is this water park here because it has a lot of features in it, um, which make it suitable for what I'm wanting to do. Um, want to download it so at the top right there is this um, this button download free click the down arrow I want the largest size so I have as many options as possible click on that and that starts to download up at the top right um, I am working on on Windows 10 here so obviously the, the software and the various details of how this works are specific to Windows 10 if you're working on Apple or Linux you'll have to find your own alternatives to the software I'm going to use um, but it should be easy enough to do that I'm not using anything fancy right so I'm going to copy this credit here because I need to reproduce that I'm going to paste it I'll just paste it into Word Okay, and I'm going to remove these hyperlinks. Those hyperlinks are um, lead you to um, to the the photographer's site and to Unsplash itself. But I'm only going to be putting them on an image, so they won't work. So I'm just taking them out. Um, right, okay. And now let's find that download. So click up here, click on folder to find it, and there it is. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to open with MS Paint, not Paint 3D, just basic old Paint. As I say, if you're not working on, Wind on Windows 10, you'll have to find an alternative piece of software to do this with. But all you need is a very basic image editor. OK, and here's our image. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole thing. And what we need to do is we need to decide on the scale for the image. One tile on Gather is 32 by 32 pixels. And a tile is the space that one character occupies. Um, and I would say it's equivalent to roughly about a metre um, in the world of Gather. And so I have to decide how many tiles wide and deep this image is going to be in order to get it to be the right scale. Um, the maximum is 100 tiles wide, 100 tiles deep. So 3,200 pixels um, width or depth is the is the, the maximum size. And I'm going to say, I'm just having a look at these. There's five sunbeds here. So suppose that we said each sunbed was a tile wide. Um, so I'm going to say, I'm just measuring it. You can't see me doing this, but I'm just measuring it with my fingers. And I'm saying, okay, so suppose that was five tiles. And the left hand side we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. It's about 60 tiles. So that's fine. That's within the 100 tile limit. And I'm going to work out how many pixels, it, how wide it has to be in order to give us 60 tiles in the width. So let's get the calculator up. So a tile is 32 pixels, so 60 times 32, 1920 pixels wide. So we'll just click resize and we'll change our unit to pixels rather than percentage. And we'll see it's currently 3731 pixels wide, so it's a lot bigger than we need it to be. So I'm going to change that to 1920 and make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked. That means that it will stay the same size, it won't stretch or squash it. 
same shape rather not the same size click okay and there you are and it has reduced our image to that size and the only other thing that i want to do with this image just now is i want to put the credit on it so let's get our text tool paste that down there um and i'm going to copy this credit out of our, my word document and just paste it in there uh, that's a bit small i would say so i'm going to make it let's say 14 points and i'm going to set it to white so that it's easy to read and leave it there we want it somewhere that it's possible for people on who are using gather to see the credit i think that's just only fair to the photographer okay and i'm going to save that and i've got a folder to keep um gather stuff in and i'll create a new subfolder for this i'm going to call it water park get rid of an earlier dry run of it there um okay and so i'm just going to call that water park background okay um so having saved that now i'm going to go into gather and i'm going to create that space so it's gather.town um and i've got an account you have to have an account in order to create spaces it's a free account um and so when i go in here it will automatically take me to my set of spaces and you can see there's some spaces here that have been added since my last video about gather so i've been using this trick to make aerial photograph maps in gather to, to allow people to walk around different types of ships in this case and i've actually also got a side view of a ship and that can be done as well um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up to the top right here and click create space um, and it has this, it wants to know if you're creating it for work events or places. That doesn't have any effect really on what it is that you're doing with the space. Um, I think it's just Gather doing a bit of market research to see what are people using our product for. So I'm going to click places because I just want this as a, as a multi-purpose space. And it will bring up a series of other spaces that I can use as templates. There's a huge range of templates that you can use. Um, but I just want a blank one. So start from blank click on there and you have to be careful choosing your name because the name of your space appears in its url so you cannot change it as it's warning you there so i'm just going to call this water park uh, what are you building this space for it has a range of options again they don't really affect what you're actually doing when you're building the space um it's just gather wanting to know what it is people are, are using it for uh, so i'm going to click open map maker Okay, and it's opened a blank map. So you can see it's marked out with the tiles. And the only thing on this map so far is this green space. That's the spawn space. So if I click go to space here, it will take me into it. But there'll be nothing there, as you will see. Gather can't get the camera just now because the recording software is using it. It doesn't matter. Okay, so it's nothing here. And I can't go anywhere or do anything because I have not created anything. All there is, is this spawn space at the top right. So the first thing I want to do is to bring in that background that we so lovingly created. Um, so I'm going to click this menu button here, background and foreground, upload background, upload a background. And there we are. Give it a moment to get it loaded in. And there it is. So I'll save that. And it, you can keep a tab open with the space with you in it so that you can see what effect the updates have. So um, if I should be able to refresh this and it should bring it in, bring me into the actual picture now. It doesn't usually need refreshing. It usually updates automatically. There we are. Um, okay, so I'm up there at the top left because that was where the spawn space was and I can now walk across this map and I can check it out to see if I think that the the scale that we picked was reasonable and I think it was. I think if it's too much, you could make it a bit bigger uh, because I am a bit big relative to these sunbeds. So if you wanted to make it fully 100 pixels wide, if I had fully 100 tiles wide in order to um, to make those sunbeds a bit more people size, you could do that. Um, but you might make the space a bit unmanageably big. It would depend how many people you wanted to have in it. I think this is good enough. I can fit across these little bridges and so forth. But at the moment, it's just a picture. I can walk anywhere on it. 
and that gives a bit of a sense of unreality so the next thing i'm going to do actually the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to move that spawn space because i don't like that top left position as a place to come in where do i want people to come in i think down here at the bottom is quite nice there's a kind of entrance area um just down below this pool so i'm going to put the spawn space there so going back to the map maker um i want to delete it so in order to create and delete things you first have to tell gather what type of thing you're creating and deleting so there's objects tile effects and walls and floors i'm going to be manipulating the tile effects because the spawn tile is a tile effect so click that and then you have to tell it what kind of tile effect you're working with so there's impassable tiles spawn tiles portal tiles private area tiles and spotlight tiles i want to move the spawn tile so i'm going to click there and then i click erase and i can erase it and I must put another one in. If I try and save that without putting another spawn tile in, it's going to have an error because it has to have a spawn tile or it's not a valid map. So I'm going to stick the spawn tile down there. There we are. That now means that's where we start. And if I go back here and I go into settings, user, general, respawn, it takes... It's Oh, it's not. It's taken me to the original spawn tile. We'll give it a few minutes to catch, catch up with itself then. Okay, and while it's doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating impassable tiles. And there's a few things that impassable tiles are for. First of all, for completely practical reasons to stop people getting into areas of the map that you don't want them to. So I'm going to put an impassable boundary all the way around this image. Just to make sure that nobody can get outside of the image. You notice it doesn't allow me to draw outside the image. On where the background image is, that's where the... Um, the map extends to but i just want to make sure that nobody can get outside of that and get stuck so all the way around the edge and then so you can use these impassable tiles if you're only wanting people to actually walk in a very limited area of an image for example if you're doing some kind of walkthrough tour which is something i do quite a lot you might want to restrain people to to stay on the path basically and you can use impassable tiles to do that and the other thing that you can use them for is to create a sense of reality. In real life, if I was walking about in this water park, I wouldn't be able to just walk through buildings. I wouldn't be able to just walk across the ponds. And so if I create areas where I cannot go and I bump up against them, that will give me a better feeling that I'm really there. Um, and it makes a big difference to how immersed people feel. So I'm going to make the decision that people are not allowed to swim when they're in this map. You might decide differently if it was your map. Um, it depends on the group that you're working with. It depends what you want them to do. So, um, I My feeling is that generally if I was bringing students into this map, I would prevent them from going in the ponds because I think it would become something of a distraction. Now that does depend what I was doing with them. Sometimes I want them distracted because sometimes I want to get them out of their passive half asleep state and into a state of some kind of... Um, stimulation and so in that case i want to introduce something that's a bit distracting and a little bit oh what's this um but if i was bringing them in here in order to do some group work if i want to use this as a as a classroom space i want them to focus on what i'm telling them and what i'm asking them to do and if they can get in here and they can get in the pools they're not going to listen to me so i'm going to block them off but that is just as i say a specific choice i'm making you don't have to do that um so we'll fill in this pool here And it's, it's worth bearing that in mind, that it's a conscious choice you're making. Um, where you allow people to go and to what extent you balance keeping them focused on what you want them to do with allowing the fact they're in essentially a video game to spark their interest. And you're sometimes you're going to want to do one and sometimes you're going to want to do the other. Um, so be aware whilst you're designing it and you're designing a space for a purpose okay so we'll fill that in i'm just going to block off that island in some situations you might want to use that island you might want to um let people um go into there for a, a group activity i'm not going to use it on this occasion but i am going to use those peninsulas so i've left them open see there's peninsulas extending into the pond I'm gonna let them open let them leave them open so that I can use those. Um okay, so we've got the big pond blocked up, we've got the little pond, we've got this one blocked up. Uh, oh and I'll block up this pond up here as well. Cause I definitely don't want the wading in the duck pond, which is plainly what that is. That's not a 
not even a swimming pool and I'm going to block off this building so they can't walk through it. Actually there's no need to block off that because that's just a little sort of walking area there, a little gravel area. Um, okay and then I am going to block off the other buildings because again just for the sake of realism if they walk up to these buildings and they can just walk straight over the top of them they're going to feel much less immersed in the thing. Um, a lot of this that gathers not just a it's it's not ju the advantage with it is not just that it's visual it's also that it is somewhat tactile and I by that I mean that you you are moving around and you are bumping up against things so do create a little bit of um, solidity in your scenery can make the experience much more effective um, and I'll block off that one now obviously you could go on doing this you could block off the trees and so forth and not allow them to walk through those you just you decide where you want them to be able to go and where you don't want them to be able to go um, I'm just going to stop with that at the moment because I don't want to spend too much time doing it essentially but I could prevent them from walking in the flower beds for example if I wanted okay and now I'm going to start creating pri private areas because this space is meant for um, for as a classroom and for group work so let's have a look and see what we could use as private areas there's an area with sunbeds here there's an area with sunbeds here there's one up here those are good candidates there's also a little cafe down here by the entrance um, so I'll start off with a cafe by the entrance and I'll create that into a private space. So I'm going back to the stamp. I'm still in tile effects and I'll change my tile type to private area. And I have to give it a name because it has to be able to distinguish which tiles belong to which tiles. Because when you're in a private area, you can hear and speak to anyone in that area. So the different areas have to be distinct from each other in the, the mind of the computer. So you give them an, a name to allow that. Um, so we're going to call this entrance cafe. Okay, and when you click to create that space, it will put that name on it um, so that you can see at a glance which tiles belong to which private areas. Okay, and I don't just want that seating area there. I want this whole cafe to be included in this this area, including this, this seating area down there. There we go. So we've got quite a big area there. Um, and that's actually big enough. Maybe I'll include some lawn there so that it can be big enough that I could use that for taking registers, for class discussions, that kind of thing. Um, okay, and then let's see what other private areas we want to create. So this big area with the sunbeds here, I'm going to go for that as a private area and I will call it large sunbed area. And I'm going to include all of this in my private area. Now you you needn't have it as big as this. You could you could split it in two, um, but you want it to be obvious when people glance at it, like where the area is. So that looks like one big area of sunbeds here to me. So I'll just make it one big area, um, and then I'm going to say small sunbed area for this bit. You see how simple this is. This is this is a very quick um, way of creating gather spaces it's not time consuming um, and this area up here I'm going to call that pool loungers there's a difference between a sunbed and a pool lounger I don't know but that's the distinction I've decided to make so I'm gonna just have this whole area here as a private space oh and don't forget the wee one there and then let's see so we've got four private spaces now including the entrance cafe and I think there's some sunbeds here so we'll have um, that pool lounger too and it does not matter what these names are as long as they are distinct enough that the computer can dis distinguish between them that's enough um, okay and finally I think I'm going to create private areas in these two peninsulas so that I if I have a large group I can split them down into lots of smaller groups so I'm going to say peninsula left Fill that in, make that all the private space. And then I'm going to say Peninsula right. And make this one a private space. Okay, so that's all. That's very much equipped for doing group work now. And then what I want to do is I want to show you how you can add some objects to this map. Um, before I do that, I'll just save this out. And we'll see if this has caught up with itself and updated to its correct spawn space yet. 
Yes, it has. There we are. So it spawned me into the correct entrance. And I can now walk up here, but I can no longer go into the pond. So that starts to feel like a real space that I'm in now. I can walk over the top of the trees. Now, there is, is possible to make foreground objects which you can walk under. And I'll maybe show you that in another video. It's a little bit more advanced. And also, if you're just trying to get something set up quickly, it's not really necessary. It's just a, um, it's a cosmetic thing. It is quite cool if you can do it. It genuinely does increase the realism quite a lot. Um, so I can now walk in there. You see it says you've entered a private space. Um, let's walk up here. Oh, I've got to walk round the building, not through it. Um, and I'll go over the little... Uh, the little bridge and here's a private space there and you see it highlights where the private space is here's a private space there and so forth um, now as I think I mentioned very briefly in the other video that you can move or move your character around either by pressing your cursor keys or by double clicking where you want to go so if somebody's finding uh, an area awkward if they're not accustomed to playing video games and that kind of thing and they're finding it awkward to move around just double click where you want to be and your character will find its own way there you go um, okay, so let's add a few objects to this to make it interesting. So maybe we'll add, let's see, what will we have? Maybe add a welcome board down where you spawn in. Um, we'll maybe add a portal to jump you to maybe the main area or something like that. Let's let's add a few a few objects. And objects are where it gets really powerful. But as I said in my other video, don't overdo them. Um, but they are very powerful. So first of all, let's add a little welcome board. So I'm going to just create one on PowerPoint. Good way, good easy way to make a quick graphic. So we'll insert some text. So we'll do that and we'll make this nice and big, bigger than that. And we'll make it more interesting font. Let's see. We'll have that one. Um, and I'll just have a message saying make yourself at home. Make that a more plain font. And make it smaller. And we'll maybe have another image. Now this is a very old version of Office I have here, so it actually still has clip art. Um, I'm afraid we'll, we'll see if it's still working. Actually, it's a while since I've done it. Yes, it does. There we are. So we'll have a wee palm tree. Let's see. I should get these palm trees. Oh, that's quite a nice one, actually. We'll have that one. If you've got a newer version of um, of Office, you'll have to find your, your images online. Oh, that one didn't work. That's a shame, because that was the nicest one. Never mind. Stop wasting time, just have that one. Um, there we are. Okay, and I'm going to save that out as an image. that's a jpeg and we'll stick it in that same uh, gather water park folder welcome sign you might ask me if I want to export every slide or just the current slide in a single slide presentation there we are right okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an object so you click on objects up here at the top left and you've got a small selection of things, but let's click on more objects and you can see the full range. There are a lot of objects. There's look, there's guitars, there's bunting, there's anchors, there's seats. It's very tempting to get carried away with the objects. They do put a load on the computers. And if you don't know how powerful the computers are, the people who are get, who are logging on to your, your event, 
be a little sparing with your objects, but I'm going to show you how you can use them and how good they are. So let's have a go in the presentation category because I want a poster. Here we are. Um, you can change the colours of a lot of these objects. In the case of the poster, the different colours are giving you different, a little different little graphic. So you can pick which one do you think fits what you're doing the best. None of them really fit what we're trying to do, so I'll just have that one. And I will say embedded image. And we click browse and we'll upload our welcome sign. And it also wants a preview image which appears on the screen as soon as you get close to it. So we'll just make that the same sign. Um, and by default, when you get close to it, it will say press X to interact. Um, but you can change that message to whatever you want. We'll just go with the default message at the moment and I will put it, put the poster, let's see where, just there. And then that's easy to access when you come in. So I'll save that and we'll see that's appeared now. So if I respawn myself, so user, general, respawn, that's me back to the position of somebody who came into the map for the first time. Um, that's unfortunately not working terribly well. I think I need to move that poster into a slightly different position. It's too close to me and so it's previewing the image over my head. So let's just move it and you can move it by using the select tool and you can just click and drag it. Um, so where should we put it? We'll maybe put it just a bit further away from the spawn tile. Put it here. There we are. Okay. Let's see how that works. And it's very useful to be able to um, to have this tab open with the actual active space so you can see what effect it has. So there we are, press X to interact and it brings up the image. So you can have various information there about what you want people to do. Okay, so that's a poster. Um, but it doesn't have to be a poster. I, you pick your pick your um, your object to suit what you want. And that could be anything. That could be a guitar. That could be a, um, a basket of apples. It could be an anchor. It could be anything. And it would still behave in the exact same way. Um, the type of object doesn't, in most cases, affect what you can do with it. In most cases, they're all the same basic thing, just with a different picture. There are some which are active um, and there's things you can do with them. Now, something which I like to put in is I like to put in activities um, using Padlets. I don't know if you're familiar with Padlet, but Padlet is a very good um, collaborative pin board um, system. And I've got a number of Padlets here which um, I've been using with classes so they're actually active. The free version of Padlet only allows you to have four of them. Um, but let's suppose that we wanted to use this Padlet as an activity and we wanted to embed it into our um, into our gather map. So the idea of this is you read through the case study and then you post down below what your answers are. Um, and in this case, they were doing this in teams. So suppose that we wanted to embed this activity into um, into our gather map. So let's create an object. We click objects, more objects. And I tend to use the, the pin board, bulletin board for Padlets because it just looks quite like it. And I'm going to say embedded website. And that embedded website, in order to, you go to, the, to your Padlet and you click share at the top right, copy link to clipboard. And you just paste that into your um, into your options there. And I'm going to change the message. So I'm going to say press X to take part in the case study activity. And let's say I'm going to put this into one of my group areas so that the group who's working in that area can all work together on the Padlet. And I've done this several times. It works really well. Um, OK, so I'm going to and I'm going to put one in there. And I'm going to put one in here. So I'm going to have four groups all working on this activity. And sometimes you can create four different padlets for the group, for the for each one for each group and put them in the specific areas. Or sometimes you can have them all working on a single padlet and just as I have in this activity, noting which team they are when they write their answers. Um, either works. You can also use other sim other systems like Jamboard or dot storming work. Uh, work well as well. Um, although Jamboard, Jamboard's a very, very powerful collaborative whiteboard that Google runs, um, but it has a bit of an issue with uh, with Gather that it won't embed. So in order to make a Jamboard work, you instead of embedding it as a 
as a web link as I've just done on these objects you have to you to create a note object and just paste the link into the note object so that people click on it and they get taken to it that seems to be the only way that works all right let's save that and you can see how these work Okay, so I'm going to take myself up to one of the group areas and you can see that each group area now has one of these bulletin boards and it says press X to take part in the case study activity. I press X and it brings up the Padlet embedded in my gather page and all the people in the, the group can be working on this together. It's really, really good for group work. Um, okay, so that is how you do that. If you want to embed a video, let's find a good video. So, for example, supposing that somebody had made a video about how things float, for example, and we wanted to embed that into, um, into our gather page. We just click share, copy, and then where am I going to put my video? I think I'll put it in the entrance area. So we click more objects, and you can put it in as... You see there's a little screen there with a video there's various styles of screens that you can use i'm just going to put it in as a tv embedded video and again i'm going to put in a, a prompt message that says press it's always x to activate the object press x to watch the video how things float and we'll stick that in there um and we'll save it you can have a wee look and you start to see just how flexible this is. And we've done this in about half an hour. We've created a workable map that is really colourful and dramatic looking and fun uh, with very little effort. And we started to add objects to it which you can use to really enrich people's learning. So let's press X and it brings up that video and that video will play oh. in the gather window. Okay, so... Um, from halfway through apparently that's because i was apparently left it having both watched half of it at some point recently um in your case it would start from the beginning um okay so i hope that gives you a bit of an introduction on how to create a basic gather space very quickly which is relatively lightweight and easy to run and really easy to adjust because you can just save this space and you can just go in and out of it and for different sessions you can add and remove objects um, oh yeah, there was one more thing I wanted to show you and that was how to add a portal space. So let's do that. So we've got our stamp button, tile effects, portal. And I'm going to say that if you walk here, let's, where, where should we walk from? Let, this little area here. Uh, I, want, I want somewhere that's out of the way there. Okay. Um, and I want to say I'm going to jump it to within the same room. So this room is called Custom Entrance, but that's just its default name. You can create new rooms that are called different things if you want. So a, a space is not necessarily one map. A room is one map. A space can be multiple maps all linked together. It's, there's a lot you can do with this. Um, but there's, at the moment, I've only created this one room, and so it is by default called Custom Entrance. So I'll just click on that. So I'm jumping to the same room, and then I click where I want it to jump to so i'm going to jump up here and it doesn't that one annoying thing is it doesn't show you it doesn't mark where the jump space is um, but it does remember it and so what i'm going to do is it, you can actually see has it worked it hasn't actually created the portal no, it hasn't created it let's have a go again because that where was it we were putting it it was here no it wasn't sorry wait where did i put that portal hang on let me have a wee hunt about oh it's there there you are. Um, you can't see that. If I save this and I go to that area, um, I can actually see that portal jumps, the portal start space. So I won't know it's there. If I walk through it just by accident, it jumps me to the, the place that I wanted it to. But that's no use. We want to actually have people knowing that they're going to be portaled. So let's put in an object. And one of the categories of objects is wayfinding. Um, and that's things like arrows. So I'm just going to put in a little arrow. I'm going to make it red. I'm going to make it a note object, which just means it's just a message. And my note object is going to be jump to lawn at top of map. And I'm going to actually make that the prompt message as well, so that you don't have to click on it, you don't have to press X to see it, it will just come up as soon as you go near it.
Okay, and I'm going to put that there. So that's really useful. You can put these wayfinding arrows wherever you want. Again, be a bit sparing because they are objects and so they will slow the thing down. It gives it gives it more to think about, but used sparingly, they can be extremely useful. Um, so there you are. You can see that now if I walk away from it, I can't see it anymore, but if I walk close to it, jump to lawn at top of map and I just walk into that arrow and there I am. Um, so yeah, I hope that's a good introduction to you to some of the things that you can do with Gather and a really quick and easy way of creating your own Gather map. And obviously you can make it relevant to your what you're teaching. So I wouldn't have a water park like this. I would have a ship. Um, you might have um, something that is relevant to, to whatever it is you teach. Um, and so it's uh, it, it, it creates the atmosphere. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I might create another tutorial later showing you some of the fancier things you can do, like creating foregrounds. Um, but for now, I think this will do to get you started. Thank you very much for watching.